Using cast iron and carbon steel is an absolute pleasure. It works extraordinarily well for all different types of cooking, but it's important to know that if you're moving from nonstick or you've just never used cast iron or carbon steel before, and you've gotten the impression that it's going to be the be all and end all and make your life perfectly simple, I just wanna set that expectation. Hi, my name is Jed, this is Cook Culture. So when people come to us to buy a carbon steel pan, like this guy here, a lot of time they're wanting to move away from non-stick. They want to buy a new carbon steel pan, season it, and have a non-stick type result, which can happen to a certain extent. You will never ever use a carbon steel pan like a Debayer Mineral B that I have here or a Matt Fur or any other brand that you'll find online. You will never get the same result as you will from a nonstick pan. The reality is that we need to change our expectation when we use cast iron and carbon steel. So when we move to cast iron and carbon steel, the results that we get from using iron is tremendous for what iron does for us. So the iron pan will create a, a flavor profile and a finish to the, to the food that you cannot get in nonstick. And so if convenience is your absolute number one and you want it fast and simple and you don't want to think about it and you just want it to slide out of the pan every single time and that is what you want when you're moving to cast iron or carbon steel, there's a very high probability that you're going to struggle. So my suggestion is to understand what cast iron or carbon steel does, like what its main properties are for, for cooking, like why you would use that and not say stainless steel for whatever job that you're trying to do. And if getting away from nonstick is really, really important to you from a health perspective, or you wanna stop consuming pans and get away from that you know, rat wheel of going through pans over and over again, which is a very good thing, then you know, what I'm suggesting is to understand what it is that you're gonna start cooking, how you're gonna cook it, and what results you're gonna get. So it's hard for me to explain this until you actually start using a pan to kind of see for yourself the difference between using a carbon steel pan and a nonstick pan, which is quite drastic. There's quite a big difference there. So I'm gonna show you now what I mean by that. So over to the cooktop. Okay, so I've preheated these two pans. I've got the Mineral B egg pan on a seven here and it's getting hot enough to fry an egg. I'm gonna use a little bit of grapeseed oil, not a ton. I'm gonna use some paper towel, kind of push that around just a little bit. And then the egg on the pan. All right, so that's gonna cook. And then again, a little bit of oil. And we're gonna put the lid on. <coughs> Quiet those guys down a little bit. Okay, so we've had the egg on for a couple minutes. We can see that it's starting to cook. And we're just gonna get underneath that guy, like so. And either we've got a sunny side up or we flip it over and we're going to get on the plate. So if you love it to be completely white and you don't want any browning, that is one of those set the expectation things. We could lower the heat even further and do a longer cook, but browning is something in which iron does. So if you are one of those people that just want to have it absolute white, you don't want any browning on your egg, then nonstick is probably the way that you have to stick to. Changing your expectation and realizing that this is how iron cooks, that is setting your expectation. So that egg is now cooking through on the other side. Okay, and so that we go, um, you know, like however the egg would be cooked. The point here is that, you know, the, the browning, the finish, that is what an iron pan is gonna do for you. And that works as a nonstick from my expectation very well. 
I need to clean that pan a little bit, but really simply it's easy, a little bit of post seasoning afterwards and that is, that is done. Does it work like a nonstick pan? Not exactly, but this is the expectation of an iron pan frying an egg. Okay, so while we're waiting for our chickpeas to cook and brown, they're actually already cooked, uh, I'm going to also show you a scrambled egg. So I've got that pan up to a seven. It's piping hot. This is gonna happen really quite quickly. So we get, you know, maybe a tiny bit more oil on there. Just having the right amount of fat is really important. Egg on, letting that guy cook. So the trick with a scrambled egg is that you don't wanna overcook your scrambled egg. You wanna get to a point where, cause it will continue cooking on the inside. So as it comes there, that on. So scrambled egg done, super simple cleanup. That is the expectation. So, you know, arguably that's gonna be the same end result as you would have in a nonstick pan with a very, very, very simple cleanup. Okay, so moving our attention to our chickpeas, you, you can see we still have a nice nonstick result, right now anyways. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna season these guys. I'm gonna take some garlic powder. I'm gonna take some curry powder. I'm gonna get some pepper. I'm gonna put on some salt. And then I'm gonna cook that for a few minutes. And that smells wonderful. So I'm just gonna let those continue to cook. So what this has done is taken them, it's dehydrating them basically. It's just taking their you know, softness, bring them down to something a little, little bit harder, drier, um, wrapping them in that flavor. I'm preparing them to go onto a salad um, that s stops putting in so much liquid into the salad. So when you have a salad and it's got salad dressing on it anyways, this is like putting on a crouton. So you dry out the chickpea like this and it makes it more kind of crouton style. Um, you know, adds a lot more fiber, adds a lot more protein, uh, just a really tasty topping for a salad. Or what my kids love them for is a snack. I'll just put these into a little container to take to school and and uh, they're awesome for a kind of recess snack. So the last little ingredient that I put in here, what also creates some problems from a sticking point of view is maple syrup. So being that, you know, we're Canadian, you know, anytime we're gonna sweeten something, it's gonna have maple syrup in it. So just a little bit of maple syrup. And then all around, And then just let that cook on for a little while longer. Okay, so let's have had a few more minutes to cook up. So into there they go. Those guys are finished and beautiful. So that is the pan that we have left over. So if I left this, this would cook on pretty intensively. If I take this directly over to the water now, I can get some steam release and we'll get it cleaned up pretty easily. Okay, so hot pan under warmish water. I've got my chain mail here. Things are kind of cooked on. And around I go. And I've now got everything out and that pan feels smooth to the touch. And back over to the cooktop we go. Okay, so we have that back onto the cooktop. I'm gonna get that up to a six and just get a little bit of excess water out of it. But I'm gonna let that dry completely on the stove top. And then what I'm gonna do is use my seasoning paste to post season that pan. So this pan here that had the egg in it, shiny, ready to go. I'm gonna give that a rinse under the water. But this guy here that had the chickpeas in it that I've cooked with chickpeas that are a lot more fibrous, 
it has left it really, really dry. And so I need to make sure that I post season every time that I use fibrous style foods. And I'll go over that in more detail in a sec. Okay, so setting the expectation. So we used this egg pan here to do a fried egg and scrambled egg. The fried egg turns out a little more brown. The scrambled egg really is gonna look exactly like what's gonna come out of a nonstick pan, which is a, a great result. So that's usually what people's expectations are. I want it like it goes out of a nonstick pan. So setting that expectation for a pan like this, it's, as you can see, quite shiny when it's finished. It needs a rinse out, but it doesn't really need much of a, a post seasoning. After I cooked an egg with, with oil, uh, still very shiny, a lot of the seasoning on there. It doesn't really need a lot of work. But moving on to the Finex pan, as you saw before I put the post seasoning on it, it was really quite dry. And this is another huge expectation setter. So if you cook more fibrous foods, if you're cooking a lot more plants, then you need to really set in your seasoning. Setting your seasoning means to having multiple processes up front in especially something like a carbon steel pan that I have a video on right here. And it will help you set in the seasoning up front to start with, which is really, really important. If you cook fatty foods all the time, saturated fat, a lot of animal products, you will find that you really don't need to worry about a lot of pre-seasoning and a lot of post-seasoning. The fat of the food is going to help you with the seasoning. And if you deep fry, if you're deep frying things in your pans, you don't need to worry about it. So really what that means between the lines, if you're cooking for health and optimum health performance from your food, you're gonna to try to eat more plants, I would assume, and you're also gonna be cooking with less oil and probably more water. And in that, seasoning pre and post is really, really, really important. If you are eating less saturated fat and less meat in your pans, you're going to need to focus intensively on pre and post seasoning your pans. You will dry your pans out a lot. That just goes with the territory. And usually people that are trying to eat healthier and more conscious about the planet are getting away from nonstick. So you're kind of in that space of dealing with carbon steel or cast iron and cooking with less saturated fat. So you've got the combination of pre and post seasoning of using a unsaturated fat that is a grape seed oil. And as you saw me using our wax and you can get buzzy wax in the States, it's available. But you're trying to get that balance of, of having the pan well uh, lubricated and ready to accept a little bit of oil and cooking with water, but realizing that once you finish cooking, you're gonna have a dried pan, probably things are gonna be stuck onto the pan that easily come out with putting a hot pan under some warm water and, and steam, re steam release. Cast iron is not a problem. I would be cautious if you have thin carbon steel. If you've bought something like the Movial or you've got the Lodge or you've got Made In or those sorts of brands, they're thinner carbon steel. They can warp if you put them under cold water, hot pan. So be very cautious of how you go at it. A little bit of steaming helps with the release. Then your chain mail around or a, a scrubby around, it's gonna get whatever you've got in it out as long as you haven't really baked something on. If you've cooked something on at too high of a temperature and you've carbonized that food onto the surface of whatever iron pan, that's a different deal. And I've got videos to help you address that. But just on a regular medium heat cooking, you've just got some food residue kind of stuck to the surface that easily will come away with just normal cleaning. So I hope that helps set the expectation when you're moving into carbon steel and cast iron. It's a tremendous material to cook with and you can get tremendous results by understanding of what those results will be and what the parameters you have that you're working within. So any questions, please throw them below. Thanks so much, take care.